you've probably been here where at some point in your life you felt money was hard and having more money was not possible because maybe you just didn't feel worthy. If that's the case, let me tell you, you are not alone. Many of us have felt this way, including me. We do have to recognize though, we live in, a, in an abundant world and what we have to do is just adjust our antenna. Yep, you heard me well. That's what our guest, Tania Basayo, tells us. Get all the details on adjusting this antenna of yours coming up next. You are listening to Her Dinero Matters, the podcast helping Latinas have increased confidence and control over their finances. My name is Jen Hempel, and as an accredited financial counselor, my mission is to help you be more confident and simplify your finances so you can save more, get out of debt quicker, and build your wealth. When was the last time you were in a difficult financial situation thinking that maybe you'll never get out of that debt and that maybe it's just impossible or hard for you to earn more money? Think about that for a moment. This is your host, Jen Hempel, and I'm grateful that you are here joining us today. Now, to add to what I asked you to think about, have you considered the possibility that what is happening is not directly linked to money, but rather your money mindset? Many times we're not aware that our thought patterns that we carry from childhood affects us in the present moment, causing us not to enjoy the life we deserve. Tania Basayo explains in detail how to work on it. She is the founder of Courage to Be, a global community of women entrepreneurs working to become financially empowered and independent, and she's also the host of the Courage to Be podcast. In this episode, you'll learn the game the subconscious mind plays on you when you don't feel worthy, as well as two key terms you need to be aware of that will help you shift your mindset and be more abundant, and the steps, the exact steps you need to heal your relationship with money. Of course, after listening to this conversation, you may have some thoughts or questions. Remember that we have a community where you can share Share these thoughts and ask questions starting today. I'll talk about that later, but for now, let's get this conversation with Tania started. Bienvenida, Tania. I'm so thrilled to have you here, una española, o puedo decir una española. Did I do it pretty well? <laughs> I'm really excited and excited about your work. I'm really excited to learn more. It's really aligned with what we do here. So, but you have more knowledge. So I'm really, really excited to dive in. So let's start with, Tanya, with your, like, just take us back in time to maybe when you were a little girl, a teenager, sometime in your, a moment in your life that really impacted your view on money. Talk to us about that. Yeah, that's a great question because that's where everything starts, right? You know, it's, it's that challenge childhood that drives the mindset with uh, our money stories and mine. And I've shared this before. So if you've heard me, it's always good to hear repetition. When, when I was growing up in Spain, my dad, as well as my uncle, like my uncle and their family live in the same complex that we did. And my dad and my uncle were at the swimming pool and they asked, they gave us money to me and my cousin to go buy the newspaper. So they gave us a hundred pesetas was what we had back in the day. And who knows, the newspaper was maybe 25 pesetas at that time. And wow, you start dating yourself when you're talking about different currency and how it all worked, man. But anyway, we went to the kiosk, we bought the newspaper we came back and my cousin got to keep the money, the change, you know, maybe it was like 75 cents or whatever. And, but my dad, he asked me for the money for the change. He's like, Tanya, where's my change? And so I gave him the change, but that incident made me feel like I wasn't good enough or I wasn't deserving enough to keep the change. And I, on top of that associated it, you know, I gave it even another layer of meaning that meant men are more deserving of money than girls, you know, men, boys or girls, you know, because my cousin was a boy and he got to keep the change instead of me trying to understand, obviously now as an adult, you know, you can go deeper into it and realize that that's the meaning I gave it, you know, as a seven year old or whatever age I was. So it's so important. And, and I think that's such a great question that you asked because we give so much meaning, you know, we give meaning 
meaning to different things as we're growing up as kids. And if we don't question that meaning that we've given over and over and over, because what we do is I gave it that meaning. I'm not worthy of it. I'm not deserving. And so what happens is as you get older, you know, you go into teenage years, you go into adolescence, adulthood, you start finding evidence of that. So then you have another money story, you know, like I switched schools, we went to a private school. I mean, we, my parents could barely pay for that school, but it was important for them to invest the money in our, in our education. But the kids that I went to school with were from much wealthier families. And so the story gets repeated, you know, like they get to ride a motorcycle to school. And so I want a motorcycle and, you know, my parents, and that's just one example. So you start looking for evidence of like, they are deserving. They must be doing something different that I'm not doing and I'm not the deserving one. So then that you keep doing it throughout your life and you start creating those neural pathways. And it's very hard to detangle that. Those are just a couple of my stories. I mean, I could tell you a lot more from childhood that kept reinforcing. Yeah, well, I'm curious to know two things. One, from that story back when you weren't able to keep those 25 pesetas or so to uh, fast forwarding to adulthood, how did that story really filter in into adulthood? And then if after that, if you can share with us what neural pathways are, so that way we're all on the same page. Well, this is one of the money blocks, which we can talk about more in depth a little bit later if you want. It becomes a money block, you know, like that's the the story I was telling myself and the meaning I gave it was I am not deserving or I have to do something in order to deserve to receive money, to receive abundance in my life. That translates into adulthood where if I get myself like a luxury item and anyone can define luxury in different ways, you know, it might be like, oh, let me treat myself to a massage or let me buy myself this beautiful article of clothing or something, you know, like whatever it is that you want to treat yourself, I might stop myself and be like, no, I'm not deserving. Even though I have the money, even though maybe someone is gifting me this, it's hard for me to receive it. And it all stems from me blocking that, you know, and not having expanded and worked on my capacity to receive. That's how it, I mean, I could give you examples like that, you know, like you, you maybe I'm, I'm more stingy with myself because I'm like, I deep down the subconscious mind and the story I've been telling myself all these years is I'm not deserving of it, you know, like, or the flip side is I have to work really hard or do something in order to be deserving of it instead of just, hey, we're all, all human beings are deserving of abundance. All human beings are deserving of money just for the mere fact that we are born and we are alive in this world. The same as we are all deserving of air and breathing air or drinking water or eating food. It's just the meaning and the Money has so many different layers and, and contortion, you know, like you can just go around money. Yeah, that's how it's translated into adulthood. And if you don't become aware of these things, it's very insidious. You don't realize how you're being and how you're acting and you have to catch yourself, you know, in the moment, you know, like maybe I'll treat myself to a nice massage and I don't have to give an excuse or a reason why I'm deserving of that massage. And I find myself like justifying it like, oh, but I worked really hard, but I just had a launch, but I just did, 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 and fill in the blank. Hopefully that answers that first part. And then neural pathways, it's been studied scientifically that our brain is, there's this neuroplasticity of it, you know, like it doesn't stop growing at a certain age. It's constantly growing. And it's what we're feeding our brain, what thoughts, what actions, what intakes, like what input, you know, there's, it's almost like if you think about it, is a software program, you know, like what meanings that you give money when you were a kid. And that's just with money. You, it could apply with everything else. You know, like, what do you believe about religion? What do you believe about health? What do you believe about your body? And so the neural pathways, it's like they, the, the cells in our brain, uh, fire off, you know, like they're, it's, it's all electric. And so it's almost like if you, an analogy that you, we could use to understand this better is if you are driving down a dirt road and it creates certain, uh, surcos, I love that we can do it in Spanish. I can't think of the name in English tracks. It creates certain tracks on the dirt. And so 
the wheels, if you keep going down the same dirt path, you're always going to go over the same tracks. Sometimes you might deviate a little bit, but it, you keep on going over and over and over and over and over. So they get deeper and deeper and deeper. And so there's these tracks on that dirt. And that's kind of like what your neural pathways are. So what you want to do is start shifting it. If you want different results in your life, you want to start thinking differently. Because if you keep on thinking the way you've always thought and you keep on doing the things that you've always done, you're going to keep on getting the same results. Results. If you want change in your life, and in this case, and in this example is, I want to feel deserving of it, you know, it's like, then you have to condition the mind and you have to be very aware of like, oh my God, I almost didn't treat myself to a massage because I keep thinking the same thing. I'm not deserving of it. No, you know what? I'm going to go get myself that massage. I am deserving of it. Another analogy would be like the train tracks. You know, you keep on going on the same train tracks and you know how you can shift train tracks, you know, like they'll, they'll change to just shift on to the, to the other train track that is going to be more serving and um, help you grow and create new neural pathways, new surcos or new tracks on the road, if that makes sense. Yes. And such great examples. So I appreciate that. Now you also share, or I've read that you've healed your relationship with money. I know you've given us various examples of what this looked like before, right? Like what, you know, basically the thought, the things that came to your mind of, of not deserving or those type of things. So what was the point in your life that made you decide it's time for a change? Uh, enough is enough. It's time to change. And what are some steps that you took to heal this relationship with your money? Yeah, it wasn't one particular day. Like I didn't wake up one day and be like, I'm changing my relationship with money. It didn't work. Like I think it, it took time. The first thing was curiosity. I started in the entrepreneurship world. I started my business and I was learning from different mentors about business strategy, systems, how to grow my business. And once you surround yourself with the right support, with the right mentors, with the right teachers, with the right coaches, then things start changing because you're, they have systems, they have methods that you can replicate in order to achieve the same success. What I was realizing in that process was all the business strategies in the world aren't enough. We need to learn because business is about money. You're transactioning money. You know, there's an exchange. You give me something of value and I give you money in exchange. I started asking questions. I just got curious, you know, like, why am I making this amount of money or not making this amount of money? Or why are my clients making this amount of money? And why not? What's holding them back? So that was one avenue that created curiosity. And I realized that you can have all the business strategies in the world. You could be making a ton of money uh, in your job. You know, you could have like a multiple six figure salary. If you've never healed your relationship with money, or if you've never worked on your relationship with money, it's very hard to keep that money, especially if you have money blocks, or if you have the meaning that we give to money, you know, like I call those the money blocks, you know, so maybe one of the money blocks you have is you, you have to be people with money are bad. Maybe you grew up with people with money are corrupt, you know, especially in our Hispanic societies and cultures, you know, it's like anyone that has a lot of money seems, it seems fishy. Some they're up to something. Maybe they're dealing drugs. Maybe they're doing something, you know, like how are they acquiring that money? So because that's the programming that the culture's given us, then we give that meaning. And then suddenly if you're making a ton of money or if you inherit a ton of money or you win the lottery, what are you going to do? You don't want to be a bad person. You don't want to be perceived as a corrupt person. You don't want to be kicked out of the tribe. So you're going to let go of that money one way, consciously or subconsciously. I'm not saying you're going to sit down and be like, Ooh, let me get rid of all my money. It doesn't work that way. It's your subconscious because you grew up with that belief that you're suddenly going to be, you're going to either you make a lot of money, but then you bring up all your expenses and you still don't understand. You're like, Oh my God, I got this bonus or I got this inheritance. How is it that I now have a lot more expenses or you'll call in to your life, uh, I don't know, some health issue that requires a lot of money, or you'll get a surprise bill from the IRS for something, something will happen in order for you to lose that all that money that you made. So you can have all the business strategies in the world. If you haven't worked on your money mindset or on your money beliefs or done this kind of work, it's very hard to get through it. That's one way that, uh, that got me curious. Another one was when I left corporate, we moved to 
to Spain. And when you leave the corporate world in the States, you can't have a 401k, which is like a plan de pensiones or whatever. You have to roll that 401k into an IRA. I didn't understand any of this stuff. Like it just, I have so many degrees and certifications and I find so many women that are in the same boat as I am. You know, it's like, we might be really good at amazing things. We might've gone to Ivy league schools, but then when it comes to money, we just abdicate the power, you know, again, part of the programming of how we've grown up, at least in my case, you know, in Spain, patriarchal country, patriarchal family, men will take care of you. You don't have to deal with it. You know, you don't have to learn about money. So anyway, I walked into a city bank. I rolled over my 401k and 10 IRA with the first representative that showed up. I didn't know what questions to ask because I didn't want to sound stupid. I didn't want to feel stupid. So I just gave my power away. And he's like, oh, we're going to invest it in these new funds and these other mutual funds, blah, blah, blah. I left to Spain and I lived there for four years. This was during 2007, 2008, when everything, the markets went down. So when I came back to live in the U.S. four years later, I had lost a lot of money in that account and not the guy's fault. It's really my fault. You know, it's, I'll take ownership and responsibility, but it made me mad. And first, because I didn't understand, you know, like, why did this happen? Second, I was mad at myself for giving away my power and not wanting to learn more about it. Have you ever wondered how on earth your friend bought their home? Or why your coworker meticulously splits the tab down to the last Diet Coke? Other People's Pockets is a show about other people's money. Host Maya Lau asks people from all walks of life to get radically transparent about their personal finances in actual dollar amounts. You'll hear from a dominatrix who gets paid to bully men at the ATM, an elite scientist who couch surfed to survive, a business prodigy who flipped his services from drugs to dumbbells and more. You can find Other People's Pockets wherever you get your pockets podcast. My husband, he said to me, why don't you contact the financial advisor that my family and myself have used for all these years? And you can learn about stocks and invest in the stock market and you, you, you choose your investments. But that sounded so scary to me because I'm thinking, I don't understand anything about the stock market. I don't understand anything about investments. I'm not good with money. You know, like, again, these are all programmings that we've had. I was never good with math. This is not something I should worry about. Like, maybe my husband should do it for me. Like, those were the chit chatter when he suggested that. And he's like, it's very easy. Like, he tried to calm me down. He's like, just contact him and ask him for a list of stocks with dividends. And I'm like, again, panic alarm. I'm like, what's a dividend? I don't even know what's a dividend. Okay, let me ask my husband. At least I feel comfortable with him. What's a dividend? You know, so he's explaining that the companies, you know, what a dividend is, that you'll get a return. They'll pay you off. Some companies do it a quarter at least and you do it yearly. The advisor sent me a list of stocks with dividends. And here's where the powerful part comes in. I got to go through that list. I worked in the advertising world. I used to work in New York City for big corporations, you know, like Starbucks, at and Samsung. A lot of those names were on that list, you know, of companies with dividends. Some companies, I believe them and I like their vision and other companies, I was like, no way in hell will I ever invest my money in that company. I don't believe in their values. I don't believe in what they're doing in the world. So I picked five companies and I put my money in there and I was working with the, that financial advisor and I just let it sit there and it grew and it grew and it grew. And they say it takes an average of seven years to double your money. And in 10 years, I added a zero to my initial investment. So I more than doubled it. I 10 x it. That made me feel very empowered and saying, you know what? I need to understand this whole money thing. You know, like it's just no one sat down to explain it to me. No one explained that there's different ways of making money besides your job. I've never really questioned why I always just believed my dad because that was the programming. You know, just believe the men in your life. They're the ones that know, they know finances much better than women. That started me on my journey to parallel to starting my business and seeing my own clients struggling because they've implemented the tools. And so I started incorporating a money mindset 
class throughout my program throughout the year. And I just started surrounding myself with mentors and teachers and the money in the finance arena, you know, like whether it was about prosperity, whether it was investing in the stock market, I got mentors in crypto. I started investing in crypto in 2017. So I've been in that journey for a while. And now what it's done is just opened up this whole world of possibility for me, you know, where I want the money working for me and understanding. And I've become fascinated, especially with the money mindset of it. That was a long story, uh, but I think it was important to point out. Absolutely. And I'm glad that you you share that one, because and especially how you mentioned that even not just in business, because that's why a reason why I do this podcast is you have to understand your upbringing, you have to understand what stories you're telling yourself and how that's impacting you. Because like you, and, and it was I wasn't even in business, but 10 years, we my husband and I had been married for 10 years. And I found out 10 years later that and I was managing the finances, I was all about finances, I was learning, I became an accredited financial counselor, yet we were still in debt, we were borrowing from his TSP or 401k, and our emergency savings continued to be depleted. So there was something going on there that I was and plus it was I carried all the shame because people saw me very smart with money, but yet I didn't have it together. So that's what led me to understanding and really figuring out that how much of an impact my money story had. So I just wanted to concur because this is important, that very, very important for people to understand. So it's good to to hear from you and your experience. Now, I do want to know some tips about your your mindset work just but before I do, I do that, there was something else that you mentioned on your website that I got my attention and since we learned neural pathways, I thought we could learn add another vocabulary <laughs> word to to the mix. You mentioned the word money energetics on your uh, website. So, I, I'm curious to know what is money energetics. So, here's the thing, money is just a tool and and it's all the meaning meaning that we've given it, you know, is money good, is money bad, you know, and I invite anyone that's listening to ask yourself that question. Do you think money's good? Or do you think money is bad? Because to me, money is just a tool. It's no different than having a hammer, you know, can you use the hammer for good or for bad, you know, you could use the hammer to build your ideal home, or you could use the hammer to destroy someone's car. You know, that's, that's how money is money. All it does is it amplifies more of our characters. So if you are someone that's generous and you're poor, you'll still be generous. If you're someone that's generous and have come into a lot of money, it's you'll, you'll enhance that character and vice versa. You know, if you're corrupt and poor, you can still be corrupt and uh, have a lot of money. So it, we have to pay attention to the meaning we're giving it. And money is energy. And that's why I speak about energetics. It really is just energy. And we are beings of energy. We, if you study us, we think that we are 3D, that we're made out of matter. But if you start studying us under the microscope, it's just energy. And so talking about the energetics of money is tied in with abundance. I always talk about we live in an abundant world. We don't live in a world of scarcity, even though many of us have been programmed to believe that we do, but we don't. The world is abundant. There's abundance of air. There's abundance of, of water. There's abundance of love. There's abundance of relationships. There's abundance of people. There, there's abundance of everything. In, in this world. Are, have you been looking at it through the filter and through the glasses of there's not enough, there's not enough for everyone. When we look at money, it really is just an exchange and it's an exchange of energy and it's an exchange of energy. You know, like, are you tapped into the vibe? It, it's energy and you're attracting and you're bringing money in because you have your antenna up and your receptors up and you're receiving money or is your antenna just like, it's repelling it. You know, like, what are you doing with that energy of money. It's all related with energy and raising our vibration in order to be able to receive more money and be in that vibration of joy, of gratitude, of appreciation, of pleasure. When you're in that type of energetic, that's when it all jump. It just comes right in. It comes flowing to you. You know, the abundance comes to you. My premise, when I teach my classes with any of my challenges with my money magic miracles, which is one of my signature programs. The main premise and the foundation is that before I even say it for anyone listening, 
where do you think money comes from? And just ask yourself that question. Does it come from your job? Does it come from your stocks? Does it come from, I don't know, from the government? Does it come from a parent or a kid? You know, where does money really come from? And I want you to think about that two seconds because the premise and the foundation that we use for all the classes and courses that I teach is that money comes from source through people. And I'll repeat that again. It comes from source, from God, from the universe, from the divine from spirit through people. Yes, money comes through your job, but it comes through a person. There's an energetic exchange. Money comes from maybe a parent that gave you an inheritance, but it came through people. It, it came from source through your parents. Money came from a check from the government. Again, it comes from source through people. And when you can align that energetic with source, with God, with the universe, with spirit, whatever word makes you feel comfortable, that's when you can be in alignment. And it's a whole other way of playing the game of money versus trying to, you know, like do things or I have to work hard or I have to, you know, like we were talking at the beginning, I have to do things in order to be deserving. It's not about that. It's about aligning, aligning aligning ourselves with something bigger than ourselves. I love it. And to wrap things up, because you do a lot of work around mindset, which is all interrelated to the neural pathways, to the money energetics and all that, what is one tip that you can provide us that we can implement today to just help us shift our money mindset to more of an abundant one? If like we're having really a difficult time, oh, we're never, I'm never going to get out of this debt, or I'm really having a hard time earning more money, whatever those thoughts recurring thoughts may be, what is like one tip of the person listening right now can implement? I'll answer that with a quote from Wayne Dyer. He used to say, when you change or when you shift the way you look at things, the things you look at shift. You just heard me say, you know, that we have ample abundance in this world. We don't get up every morning or go into a room and think about, oh my God, there's like a hundred people in this room. I better hoard my air because there's not going to be enough air for all of us to breathe, you know, in this room. So there's plenty of abundance. And I want you to start shifting that mindset, you know, and question that like, oh, wow, yeah, I never, you know, like, I always think that there's not enough, you know, there's not enough for everyone to go around. There's not enough money in my bank account. There's not enough. Here's the thing that the results that you currently have in your life, meaning how much money is in your bank account, how much money you make from your job, how much you have in investments are just results from your prior, your past thinking and being and the way you've been acting up to now. That's the results you have right now. You have the power to change that. If you want different results in the future, you, that power is in the now. So you have to shift the way you look at things and become more aware. The main tip is start becoming aware. And when you become aware, like just showing up to this podcast and listening to it, it's like, oh, I heard something new today, you know, and now I'm aware. Let me question this. Let me get curious. So I would say the first place to start is becoming aware. The second one would be question your beliefs. Like, yeah, what do I believe about money? Why do I believe that? And get curious. So become aware, question the beliefs you've, you've been passed that have been passed down to you because these are just beliefs that have been given to us from ages, from the moment we were born to ages seven or eight, when our conscious mind gets created. Before that, it's just the subconscious mind. So most likely the person that's running the show right now is your seven or eight-year-old based on all those stories and the meaning we gave to money back then. So just become aware, question your beliefs, and then uh, get curious. Keep on asking questions. Look at, your, you know, how are you acting and reacting to things? Love it. Thank you so much, Tanya. This has been so fantastic. I really appreciate you, uh, what you're doing, and all the wisdom that you brought today. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. That was such a powerful conversation, don't you think? I want to do some reflection for you based on the conversation today. And of course, the conversation is about money mindset. And we know that it's an important aspect of your personal finance that can help you achieve financial success and independence. We talk about that a lot in this podcast, the mindset, the money stories, all of that. It's all intertwined. And this involves developing positive attitudes, beliefs 
beliefs and habits towards money, such as saving, investing, budgeting, and just being smart with any debt you can't take on. And notice I didn't say don't take on any debt because sometimes it's just a part of life. Also, developing a strong and abundant money mindset is not always easy, as it requires overcoming limiting beliefs, changing behaviors, and educating oneself on financial topics. It's doable, but it's not a job that you can do from one day to another. It's a lifelong work. But of course, with the help of resources like this podcast, also tools and support, you can cultivate an abundant money mindset. So that way you can stop feeling unworthy because you deserve more. You are worth of so much. And you can also improve your financial well-being. So if you're listening to this episode, you are definitely already a step ahead. The goal of Tanya is for you to understand and heal your relationship with money and shift your mindset, attracting opportunities and abundance into your life. As Wayne Dyer said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. That, I want you to hear that again. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I know after this conversation, you have something to say about it. I just know it just because it was that powerful of a conversation. So don't forget to share your thoughts, takeaways, and questions in our community over at jenhemphill.com forward slash community. It's a free community for you to join on Facebook and really take what you learn on this podcast to another level with conversations and questions and thoughts and sharing your takeaways because you sharing is going to help someone else and vice versa. So take advantage of the community and join us again at jenhemphill.com forward slash community. Next week, we're going to meet Kat Samuto. And let me tell you, if you have had to start from scratch all over, like from zero, regardless of your age, you can because she's going to show you how she did it. So that's next week. Stay tuned for that. Bueno pues, that is everything. Thank you so much for taking your time to tune into the show. You can check out the show notes over at jenhemphill.com forward slash 345. That is jenhemphill.com forward slash 345. Remember that being the reign of your money starts now simply by claiming it. I believe in you and so should you. Nos hablaremos el próximo jueves. Chao.